Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 30th, and right now we're looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. Check out this strong storm across the Gulf of Alaska, Washington, Oregon, off to the right. And this will be filling as we go through the day today, moving into north and central British Columbia, trying to bring a bit of precipitation to its south as we go. But I'll show you that. It's not amounting to much. It doesn't look like. And then we're going to take a look at what is to come this week. we got some model disagreement on what is to come towards the end of the week between the GFS and the Euro. European models. So we'll go over those details as we go through the video this morning, taking a look at what the visible satellite imagery looks like. You see Mount Rainier right here, some high clouds over the region, you know, a little bit of low cloud activity here across the Strait of Juan de Fuca, Vancouver Island, some of the southern of uh, Willamette Valley, and you can see the Washington, Oregon coast nice and clear right now. And if you were up early enough, you might have been able to catch a glimpse of the comet that's on the horizon there during the sunrise period. But the best viewing may still be yet to come as we go towards about the October 12th, and that'll be for sunset. So I'll show you that here now. I'm not going to try to pronounce that. I'll just call it Atlas from here on out. Maybe I'll do a little bit of forecasting for this as we go. But you see, some people are checking in with images of this comet during the sunrise period here. So if you want to Google that and check it out if you have more interest in that go ahead and do so so taking a look around the region we have some uh, freeze warnings for some of the blue mountains idaho western montana some of the east slopes the cascades oregon there was some frost out there pretty chilly conditions this morning still some red flag warnings there across southwest oregon also now take a look at SeaTac yesterday, 63 degrees, 67 is the normal high for this time of year, 81, the all-time daily record high set back in 1993 for yesterday, didn't get anywhere near that, and 82 would be the record high for today set back in 1992. Let's take a look at the observed precipitation, we're going to end up the month probably about an inch below average, so not great to see that, but the temperatures are right around average when you average things out, observed lows being a bit higher and the observed highs being a bit lower than normal. Taking a look at the European on the left versus the left versus the GFS on the right. So you'll see this strong storm burrowing into Western British Columbia. You notice it's filling rapidly. It tries to bring some onshore flow and some precipitation down towards Washington, mainly for the Cascades, but it's not going to pack much of a punch. The storm will have lost much of its strength. But then as we go on in through, this is about Thursday night right here. You can clearly see the differences. The GFS much more ridging across the Pacific Northwest, troughing out over the Pacific Ocean here, and the definitely much more of a uh, uh, significant storm, let's call it here. I mean, it's a typical fall blustery system, but you see the GFS wants nothing to do with that as we go on into the day Friday. So big model disagreement that we get to work out here over the next couple of days. And if we take a look off into the next weekend, you see some ridging develop, Gulf of Alaska troughing continues to be active. And then we scroll on in towards the next week period. The European wants to bring, again, some frontal systems closer while the GFS is just completely opposite there as we go into the October 11th time frame and that's when the comet viewing during the sunset period would be uh, a little bit better here so if you want to see that comet vote for the GFS there but we'll watch it day by day and break things down taking a look here at the European on the <clears throat> what I've done here is put the European on the left the ensemble control run so this is basically the deterministic model versus the European artificial intelligence so there goes our strong storm system. Pretty good model agreement here, bringing some precipitation to Washington, maybe clipping Oregon a little bit here, but it's not much. Definitely British Columbia and Southeast Alaska getting the lion's share of that storm. Now, as we go on in through about Thursday and Friday, there is some timing differences that start to show up with that next frontal system, although they both do have it. And again, the GFS was much weaker and much further north with that system. So that's our next uh, chance for some rainfall. We're looking at uh, you know Friday, October 4th is when this next frontal system will move in. We'll fine tune those details as we get a little bit closer. And then you can kind of see the artificial intelligence model a little bit further south with that next storm system as well. Now, taking a look at the European on the left versus the GFS on the right, looking at the Pacific Northwest here, and let's go through total precipitation over the next, uh, what about, f you know, two weeks out, let's call it. And you can see the GFS wants to keep Washington dry, and the European bringing some precipitation down in towards Seattle as we go through next weekend. And both models have big precipitation amounts for Western British Columbia as well. And then as we scroll off into the 10 plus day time period, you can see the European wants to bring some precipitation for Washington down into Oregon. And the GFS is much more reluctant with that precipitation there. So something definitely we'll be watching as we go. 
Um, take a look at what this system is going to bring us. I want to kind of show you what's going on here. So as we go through the day today and then tomorrow, you can see the onshore flow kind of kick on there as that, si that very degraded weak system is moving by to the north. You can see these westerlies coming down the east slopes of the Cascades, bit of a surge down the Strait of Juan de Fuca. And that comes through as we go through Wednesday morning. Then that starts to weaken a bit here as we go on in towards Thursday morning. You see things even turn offshore by the time we get towards Thursday morning, this east flow. You know, not bad there. Maybe we'll warm up a couple degrees here as we go through the day Thursday. And then, yeah, so that next system, not much in the way of weather here other than the onshore flow and some light precipitation amounts across Washington and really not much into Oregon. Taking a look at the daily two meter max temperatures. This is for today, Monday. And you can see as we go through tomorrow, warm up a little bit there. There's Wednesday, cool back down a bit. You can see down towards 70 in the Willamette Valley. You can see some you know, lower 60s here for Southwest BC mid 60s for western washington a little bit warmer east of the mountains there's thursday friday saturday sunday i mean these aren't bad days coming up here depending on just what is to come as far as the frontal systems are we going to get the one promised on the european or we're we going to get more ridging and warm things up here as we go towards the weekend good questions things we'll be answering here over the next couple of days now um, let's go ahead and take a look at fantasy windstorm forecast. I just like looking at this, uh, you know, from time to time. You can see the European, some of these ensemble members do have a few gusts up into the 30 mile per hour range. There's even one random ensemble at 42 miles per hour, but the control run says 27 with that, you know, fairly weak frontal system as we go towards Friday here. So nothing to get too alarmed about. There's no big windstorms out in our future, unless you count one of these, it says 48 and 51, but these are just random ensemble members here. And that's going to be showing up as we go through the fall months. Almost every single run has some kind of sporadic high wind gust out there. Nothing to be worried about at all. GFS, you can see kind of the scattered nature and the GFS does not have a very good reading on any individual frontal system rolling through the area as we go through the two week period. And the European, a little bit better here, shows that frontal system here. Some of the ensemble members are in agreement. The control run called for two, two tenths of an inch as well. So hopefully we're getting towards that time of year where you don't have to water your garden, at least not nearly as much, and then maybe another system after that. The GFS also wants to warm things up. If that ridging does occur as we go through this weekend, it could make for a very nice weekend. And then you can kind of see maybe something coming after that. Who knows? Flip a coin. Taking a look at the significant wave heights. This is that system out over the Gulf of Alaska spawning some big waves. Going to be moving towards western BC, spreading down across Vancouver Island, and eventually giving a bump in some of our wave activity here as we go through the midweek period. N nothing too crazy though. And then you see we get a break from that as we go through Friday. Then maybe that next frontal system will bring some more wave action after that. We'll see how that goes. Look at the 6 to 10 day. This below average dominates a lot of the lower 48 except for the east coast here. This goes through October 9th. And then look at this 6 to 10 day temperature outlook above average, really centered across some of the southwest, extending up into Oregon and Washington as we go through the October 5th through 9th time period. And just a reminder here, when we get these onshore winds at all, you know, it's still that time of year where relative humidities can be on the low side. And you can see there is some elevated and some moderate risk as we go through the upcoming weeks. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. You know, it's not time to let your guard down. We can still get that fire activity and have it spread. But Anyway, yeah, some interesting stuff. Let's try to get some model agreement here over the next couple of days. Hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow, and I will talk to you guys then.